think you're there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, I wanted to do this breakout session specifically to introduce how we have been operating this new DGS gravimeter on board the vessel. Um, so this unit is a DGS. So, hmm? oh. Oh. Okay. Really? Yeah, otherwise people online can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then all four that then I dance from one to uh, three. Me, <laughs> Maya, Dana. Um, so how about this? Yeah, okay. So this unit right here in the picture is DGS uh, marine gravimeter, and right next to it is is BGM three, just a sensor. And you have, if you know what BGM3 marine gravimeter, we have this right next to it with a stack of basically things with cables that is communicating with this old sensor. And every single component are already out of stock. We salvage everything from Navy, so we don't have anything other than countable spares in our so-called cave, <laughs> where the cave is, cave in the woods hall. So a few years ago, Dan Fornari et al. Uh, started making this transition from procuring the new um, gravimeter and see if we can start graduating from BGM3 operations. And started 2019, but, um, basically uh, a little bit hampered by uh, COVID, but as I talked uh, here, um, Thompson, before Thompson, we tried on the Armstrong and we kind of had to send back the unit to retune the sensor for open ocean operations because this is the company whose main clientele or in the industry who do the survey in the very, very calm sea. So when they saw this ship motion on Armstrong, they got basically sense of freak out. So they had to expand the dynamic range to accommodate the normal UNOS or ARF operations in open ocean. And this is that it's been working very well on Thompson. And so they did a uh, year and a bit of a side by side test to give us the good credential to uh, move forward with and then move forward propagating DGS throughout the vessel. And now uh, Thompson only have DGS. Uh, Reveal and Ride, we had a very, very um, small time window to just install DGS. And then Atlantis, we had a year and a bit of uh, side by side, and then now they have DGMs, uh, the DGS. Uh, the next in line is Sigriac. The reason uh, for prioritizing Sigriac uh, is very strategic. We wanted to make sure that um, Arctic Initiative, which is a very big one in the ONR and also within NSF and then OBE, to be able to get the very good data. So that's why uh, first, uh, first of the two 2022 funded um, DGS went to Palmer and then the Current, uh, currently built ONR sensor goes to Sequoia. So we cover the both polar region. Lanxas, um, I know they're struggling at times in operation of BGM3. We really hope to get a sensor on there um, in the very near future. And Armstrong, we have just question mark. Uh, it's up to where they are going. And Kilauea, we are standby for their uh, science needs. So that's where we are at. And those who still have to operate BGM three, bear with us. 
and we still have a spares. We can send you gyros and whatnot, but please bear with us. We're doing our very best to make sure we can transition smoothly to the 21st century equipment. And now, Maya Thompson from Scripps will introduce her and her team's teammates um, operations practice of the DGS meter. The reason I chose Maya for this collaboration presentation is because we just sailed together and she also experienced um, two D DGS systems on both Ride and uh, Revel, so two different class vessels, and then each had an interesting challenge. So here, Maya. And then after Maya's presentation, I take any questions. Mm -hmm. And every question is interesting. I might not have asked. Yeah. We post to that Yeah, we were there. Yeah. 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 I don't like it. Half, half door then. Yeah. Ken's feeling something out Hi, I'm one of the instrumentation script uh, instrumentation technicians at Scripps. Um, and recently we got, or earlier this year, we got rid of both of the BGF3s on our valve and ride and replaced them with DGSs. So with the new DGS, daily monitoring happens physically um, at the sensor. Um, we check the cross and long levels at the top of the sensor to make sure that they're relatively level, um, to kind of just go back and forth. Um, there are also four vibration mounts, these little feet. Um, and we check to make sure that there's air in them and that the pressure is accurate because that can impact um, the vibration on the, or impact the vibration on the ship and how the TGS reads its gravity data. Um, we also have our screen from the DGS displayed in our computer labs, um, and we monitor the QC gravity data and the VMON data to make sure that they're relatively steady. Um, and uh, we experienced some of this issue on our bell when it first got installed on the um, transit from the South Atlantic to South Africa earlier this year. Um, the gravity data and the VMON data readings were kind of all over the place. Um, and so we reached out to PFPE and had to figure out why we were getting these readings. Um, some of it could have been due to the heavy seas that we were in, um, but we also determined that the DGS laptop initially was we're pretty far away from where the monitor or the instrument is was located. Um, and so we thought that there could be some um, interference um, from the transducer into the server room um, that caused the readings to be um, not accurate. And then on ride, we didn't have as big of issues, but one of the things we did notice is when looking closely at the data, um, the latitude numbers were showing that we were in a different part of the world than we were in. So we had to, uh, we reached out to PFE and uh, they needed to send us a different software, like update our software, um, and that fixed the issue. So we haven't had too many issues with the DGSs 
sense installing them, but those are, yeah. Can you uh, elaborate on a couple of things? One is who provided the laptop to you? PFP. PFP. Yeah, it was sent. It was sent so it doesn't come with the DGS. It it will. Uh, it does come with DGS. Okay. That's that's their laptops. Okay. So the basically what you will receive in the box is that unit and a laptop and probably spare. Okay. Yeah. And then. For the latitude, could you just maybe mention then what are the inputs that the system expects from the ship? Because like obviously you're giving a position, right? Yeah. Are you giving anything else? Give me a I think. I think it's just position. I think it's just position. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. And actual longitude. Sorry. Longitude. It's not the latitude. Oh, longitude. Sorry. Yeah. No. 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 It, it's it's basically the software could not um ingest that um negative number. Yeah, yeah. Negative and or that west character right. um in the P A P B G string. Yep. So as Mexico mentioned, we do still have some DGM threes in the fleet. Um, Keely still has one, which we help monitor. Um, but earlier this year, or end of end of last year, we took the BGM three off of Ravel, and then January turned took the BGM three off of Ride, and then June July, whenever Atlantis was in San Diego, we took the BGM off of that ship as well, um, and we had all this stored in one of the offices at Marfac, um, and recently we sent two of them back to Woods Hole, but we do still have one of them. In our office, um, rides old BGM three, um, and so weekly we do take test points and put them up on a Google Drive uh, to monitor that all that's still working and all the ranges are accurate. Um, I think we're leaving the one on the west coast and like stairs for the west coast, but I think that's also to be determined if if and when we'll go back. Uh, can, um, I make, can I make a comment? Uh, can you hold off your comment till the last, or do you need no, that? No, 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 that's fine. I can wait. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Um, we do do gravity ties and land ties. Um, gravity ties are typically taken, or all ties are typically taken 24 hours after the ship has been in port. Um, we take these um, based on the uh, yeah. uh, established NGA locations, um, either at piers or I guess in some locations, they're not close to the pier where we would do a land tie. Um, and a land tie would occur if the ship, if the location is more than one ship length from um, the mark that the NGA has given us. Um, and this helps with the instrument calibration. And so we collect the data as often as possible, unless we are in the EZ and we are told you cannot take the data. Um, our data is all collected um, at the throughout the cruise, and then it is uploaded to SOMPS, um, and then R to R takes that data and publishes it. Um, the BGM three laptop had a location for the land tie and uh, gravity tie data, um, so that was added or was added to the R to R and all the data saved. With the new with the new DGSs, that is not offered right now on the laptop. There's no space for it, so we do still take the land ties and gravity ties, um, but we send those to PFPE to be calculated and they see if there is an issue um, that needs to be uh, figured out. Um, I think that should be changing in the future um, to kind of make that not just send emails out and hopefully get something back. But right now that's what we have to do. And then... <laughs> 
Um, we, like, we are still working. Uh, the details are new. So uh, we still have questions uh, on our end as well as um, I'm sure a bunch of you guys. Sure. Okay, before we go here, Dan, what's, what was your comment? Go ahead. Yeah. I'm here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, thanks to everyone who's in the room for coming and uh, listening to the presentation. I think that this is a, a major sort of transition for the marine geophysics community, especially those concerned with gravity. Um, and uh, I, I really think that it's important for everyone to um, sort of acknowledge Jim's sort of farsighted um, long range vision for what needed to happen for us to still stay in the gravity business. Um, and so I just wanted to make that point. If you see Jim, tell him that you appreciate it because it's really made it a big difference. And I think it will continue to make a big difference um, for the operators and operating the gravimeters. And I think that all of the, I mean, we've been getting great responses from all of the technical support people to um, uh, in terms of uh, asking good questions about the new GGS meters and really, as Maya has just demonstrated, sort of showing how you can develop best practices that are really applicable for the academic research fleet. And I, th I think that that's really great. Um, I, I did want to um, mention this point about the inflation of the tires um, and also uh, perhaps um, uh, Masako, at some point you can talk with her. We, we are working with the manufacturer to try to improve the um, uh, the sort of dynamic, uh, 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 I don't know how you would say this, resolution or basically the performance of the platform uh, that the sensor is on. Um, Moscow and I and 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 others at, uh, at DGS have been chatting about this a lot. And um, we think that there's improvements that DGS could make and um, to reach the kind of stability that the BGM3 platforms provide for their sensors. Um, so it's something that we're working on, and I think that there's room for improvement, but I think with good sort of operating procedures and with good sort of uh, survey strategies and, and whatnot, um, the, that the quality of the data can be uh, very good and certainly uh, acceptable for the kind of geophysics that, that we're doing in the academic community. Thanks. Thank you. So I just have a quick question. Does the DGS have any of the security issues we used to have? No, no, no. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. So, so just to yeah summarize what Dan's being uh, mentioning, we all hope that these you know modern tools are plug and play. We all wish so. It's not, and the part because surprisingly. Um, even very reliable industry standard instruments are not experiencing the rough weather, rough sea state, or duration of the usage of the instrument like we do on the vessels. So for them, means this manufactured dynamic gravity systems in Colorado, for them, this is a totally new territory. They are extremely interested in the sensor stability for over the course of years, because that's the data they've never been able to get. Their survey company goes, do the survey three weeks, done, right? That's their standard usage. They don't expect them to be like little cradle for good three to five years. So um, part of the PFP job is to uh, first and foremost, ensure the data coming out of these new DGS meters are kind of sound. And to do that, I we have been requesting each vessel to give us snippets of data so that we can catch if sensor is behaving erroneously. And also, um, we started kind of ship visit, starting with the ride, and I'm going to go to Thompson to make sure that all the data pipeline with margin of navigation data, et cetera, are really what we should be um, uh, acquiring. And then so less than, you know, when the data get to the R2R, 
for Suzanne to check up where's the where's the Thai data? You know, is this data really you know nice and sound or science quality? And so, but other than that, most of the practice stays the same. We really need to get down the gravity tie whenever you could. Most of the vessels amazing doing an amazing job. I'm impressed with uh, how many times, for example, Lanxas, do we have Lanxas reps here? Okay, so Lanxas does, it's really um, super frequent, they do. Anytime they come back to this hole, they can do it. So there's nothing like too much of the grab tie or land tie. So please continue that practice. And then as Maya pointed out, when we were operating BGM3, there is this, laptop where you can punch in the data and then that is already connected to the sensor so the software there can calculate you and get back to you the bias where we have that in-house software made for the bgs how to disseminate that is my question to you and so you know, we are 21st century, you're much more technical than I am. So if we provide you the package of either MATLAB or Python that mimics that gravity tie GUI that you have been using on the BGM3, do you think, I'm pretty sure you can, find the computer somewhere on the vessel to install that and run it. Yes, Ethan. Could you make it a virtual machine? <laughs> I could, I cannot do, but I can look into that. Is, is Stefano involved in this? No. Okay. Not anymore, but I have uh, already kind of internally semi-contracted Zach Barkowitz can do it, <laughs> probably. I, I, I think for us, we would, yeah. we would like a VM. And then we don't need hardware. And, but yeah. questions are you, are you saying you have to have a DJS laptop and then another computer? I mean, the another computer here, uh, let me clarify, is any computer you have or. But if it, you're providing a laptop, you can install Python or MATLAB on a DJS laptop. Probably. We could. <laughs> Definitely. We, we, yeah. yeah. So we, <laughs> but, but. Do we want to do, um, so these are the laptops. We are not providing it. That's DGS is providing with the meter. So then could you recommend a procedure to DFPE by a DGS laptop? <laughs> uh, th this, is, th this is Dan. Can I just make a comment, please? Uh, yeah, so, so uh, listen, yes, it would be easy to put software on a laptop, but that laptop is dedicated to running the meter and you don't want anything else interfering with it. So yeah, you need to put this software on another laptop and run the Thai program or anything else you want from another laptop. This one, we have the computer that's running the, the, the sensor and we have a, a ready spare, hot spare that can be plugged in at a moment's notice if there's some issues um, uh, that's been loaded with the any file, but you don't want to use that computer for doing anything other than running this meter. But doesn't it need the data from? It does. Yeah. I know. So it seems like it would make sense to have it on the laptop because then the data is being collected and it's mm -hmm. right there for you to use. And when we're doing the calibration, don't we not care yeah. about a few moments worth of data while we're running our We do. Yeah, so the right now, what's being uh, sent to us is the not only the grab tile water hot data, but also the chunk of the data during the that operation. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know what you're saying that yeah, to basically remove that redundant um, effort. It, it's just, it, adds, it adds complexity yes. to the operation, yep. which yep. is going to make it harder to accomplish yep. repeatedly. So let me bring back, and uh, we will, let me bring back to PFB, and then we'll come up with something straightforward as you just suggested. Do you have any comment, please? Or 
Mine's general that laptops for instrumentation systems are becoming more problematic because with mm -hmm. cybersecurity for who's managing, how are those laptops managed? And eventually when they go out of date, it's usually at an inconvenient time. And then mm -hmm. it's out. So the laptops and less than managed laptops, managed systems are the direction yeah. things are going. Well, we would straight up convert that laptop to a VM long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's, that's and it. then we would be interested in if it's a Windows based system, we would be interested in joining it to our domain so it can get and then being managed by the IT team, which could create a whole series of problems for you. So that, that can be a dis dialogue, that can be a discussion. Yeah. It gets yeah. There. So I think the um, sounds like overall, I'm not criticizing my own institution, but we tried through um, our IT department to do the similar thing and then we hit the wall very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I might need communities help to push this VM um, version I, of I see the, the implementation. Yeah, I suspect where this is going is that each institution is going to have to apply their own security standards. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so it's just yeah. going to be a case by case, unfortunately. So okay. I know that's harder for PFB. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, just got to go through the process of how do we install okay. TGS on school? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what is it's, it's Python or MATLAB based? Can, can, I, can, I make, can I make a comment? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, Dan. Ethan, stop What if you just Sorry. basically provide the compiled software package and then mm -hmm. we all deal with it in our own it, cluster but, security way? Yeah. Is that okay? Well, so. <laughs> I just, I agree with Dan on the design principle of you shouldn't have your collection mm -hmm. endpoint mm -hmm. be your processing endpoint. That's mm -hmm. best practice. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it creates a fundamental problem for the type of data we're talking about okay. today with the type of compute power the average device has. Mm -hmm. um, so would PFPE be willing to investigate if it really, really creates a problem to have the graph type processing done on the hardware that DGS provides. Yeah. I'll take that back. <laughs> if you could quantify that it actually creates a problem because yeah. again, you're adding complexity where there could be less, right? which means it's going to face more adoption problems, mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. operational problems. Where people can, might can I, can I make it? That's what's going to happen. Are we not applying the bias ever? Yeah. We're we not do. ever going to? No, because it, it seems that, that hey, just to know when you did the, you know, like if you have just a little bleep in the data, I don't think that hurts. So, you know, you did a calibration there. <laughs> but, but to be continued, I mean, point made. So we don't need to keep banging that drum. Yes, Dan. Uh, um, Okay, so so the comment is, I mean, this is, a, I think, a really excellent discussion because ultimately we do want to make it easier for you to integrate how you're operating this particular sensor into your ship systems, which they are, are varied throughout the UNOLS fleet. The, 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 the instrument runs on LabVIEW. That's what's running the GUI behind the operation of the system. And I got to tell you, I'm not thrilled with it. I think it's glitchy. It um, DGS has not really. They, this is a system that they've sort of put patches on, and they've they've. Um, I mean, it's workable, um, but I think that there could be a lot of improvement in it um, in terms of its reliability, because sometimes it crashes, and in terms of um, uh, ultimately what you know what sort of commands it's giving the meter, as well as how you're able to put inputs like the like the GPS strings and whatnot into it. So I think. Um, certainly, PFP is going to going to sort of um, deliberate on this, but I think that th this is one of the things that uh, Maya and Nigel and Daniel Aliot at, at DGS need to talk about because now we're talking about the 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 status of gravimetry in the United States for NGA and for the and for academia is going to be the DGS meter. So we need to make that system much more robust, and we need to make sure that we're accommodating to these varied needs of the of the operators in the academic research fleet in terms of how they connect the sensor to their system and 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 how they basically use it. So this is all really good input and feedback that we can take back and hopefully get some uh, some action on. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. And we will. Yes, Ethan. 
for the DGS users, um, what what are the output options from the laptop? Do you because we have to archive the data in our data distro? So is it serial UDP? Do you have options? It's, it's I don't think the UDP was an option, but we just jam the dual Moxa box and make it UDP anyone. Okay. Um, it's open on your desk. So I think we are kind of touched upon this forest two points already. And I touched on, yes, continue the gravity practice you have been doing. That's been awesome. Um, what would be this one? USB stick thing? There were, uh, I don't know if it was you. They were talking about getting the raw data so, uh, with a USB directly from the meter itself, like down at the instrument. Hmm. Yeah, yes. Awesome. Yes, it's on the back. It's on the back of the DGS meter. You could supposedly can do that. However, it I think, in my opinion, has been problematic. I don't think that that data transfer is very good um, uh, because we've had some issues with it. Um, and I'm not actually sure if the latest ones that they've sent still have that um, uh, capability. So I'm not sure, but this is another thing we need to take up with them. Thanks, Sam. Hey, did, I, did we answer your question? Yeah. Or, okay, so the uh, two kinds of data. Um, yes. So I just, and I think somebody else mentioned it. Mm. Is the data that you would put on the USB drive the same as you get in the serial? So I was going to touch up on okay. that. Okay. So two kinds of data uh, that is going to your facility or to your R. And I already checked that. I think you already have the two, right. couple of um, uh, cruisers data there. So one is what's being recorded in the laptop, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is the raw data we call. It's not converted to any meaningful anomaly data, mostly the strings of including some engineering data from the meter. What is actually uh, merged with the uh, navigation data is from the serial output. And so we are archiving both though, yes. both. And um, sometimes this, as Maya uh, explained, this sensor to laptop connection, when it gets finicky, <laughs> there is a drop of the bytes and then the data corrupted. So, so that's a little bit of, um, Thing I need to talk to DGS, uh, I only could find when I was digging into the data on the ride of the goal. You know. That was right, not Rebel? Um, that was right. right, yeah. No, no criticism. I, I don't know. We should have been there earlier. I'm and guess, this is, I suspect this, it's the structured wiring, mm -hmm. like that patch that probably caused that. But that's normal if, you, you know, if your cabling's not solid. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it could be. I mean, what you might think about doing is have a series of recommendations you make. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so you could recommend, hey, it's better if you don't process your app on the mm -hmm. same computer. But to Ethan's point, people are going to do it anyway <laughs> in the absence of, uh, you know, uh, yeah. then you could recommend, you know, the shortest possible run uh, to serial mm -hmm. ingestion for, you know, that kind of thing for yeah. reporting. So, um, you know, it's it's our apology that. We we had a little bit of you know wishful thinking when we introduced this meter, like okay, it's gonna be super easy, but to get there, it takes time is our learning lesson. And so I really appreciate your patience for you know more than reactive action than proactive from our end. Yes, Lee. Well, sure. I mean, it was it was quite a scramble just to keep these gravimeters on the ships because the export control, oh, the, no the export field, control, the, the yeah. legal ramifications yeah. were <clears throat> university <throat> export control offices saying mm. do not put this on your ship, and we couldn't meet the terms and conditions of the ICAR. Okay. These growing okay. pains are yeah. are far better than continuing to deal with export control <laughs> by an order of magnitude. In order of magnitude. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, with the next family, I am host with, through my through the export control office. Mm -hmm. We are hosting DBTC on Roger Hill in late January mm -hmm. to so that they can hopefully understand some of the realities. Maybe they have suggestions. They don't know what a ship looks. Like. I mean, they don't. They don't know. Okay. They, they don't know. What it so um, we're trying to have that dialogue. Not that it's going to help the the BGM three situation. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's. Okay. that's Thank you for mentioning that. Soon to come to Syria. So. <laughs> so now that you guys are collecting some data, the the gravity expert mm -hmm. I talked to, mm -hmm. he's a little biased. So. Yes. Um, yes. So we. How, can... how, how's the science community? Ex yeah. So. Um. Mm, I could make three points. One. Uh, I talked to that uh, gravity expert um, in person when he was on sabbatical in the University of New Hampshire this summer. And we talked through most of the questions or bias or suspects or doubt is coming from unfamiliarity with this meter. It's so new. In principle, you know, we understand if there is a manual and a mechanical drawing of the gim gimbal and then how they work. But actual data that has really specific characters to these meters have been unknown to the academic community. So I have been looking into that, you know, using a lot of the ride and reveal data since I sailed on because being there and then looking into the data with all this ship environment, it made a huge difference to intrinsic, building intrinsic knowledge. And unfortunate that the expert only could have the data which he could not sell on Healy. Right. And then that was the most, one of the most challenging environment for, the meter itself in that earlier on two years ago. But um, throughout our conversation, we kind of agreed upon taking the very detailed components of data analysis and we're gonna write a paper. It's not the scientific paper, it's almost like a guideline paper for the community. So our vision um, plan is that we are going to publish uh, in collaboration with the, our experts and a few more experts, hopefully from the geophysics field to describe what are the marine gravimeter uh, data should look like from these two sensors. We're not gonna be able to um, disregard the data from BGM3 because that's mostly what's archived now. So we have to make an overview of that and DGS. And there are the specific character of the DGS generated data that users have to be aware of. And those are going to be in the description. And then we already had a big meeting with the uh, company that they are okay to publish that part. Yes. Well, years ago, we had a collaborator out in New Zealand. Don't, mm -hmm. they, don't they, they use these meters in New Zealand for GN, GN, the, the GNS? GNS. Yes. And GNS, and they, 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 they temporarily installed one. Well uh, Roger Revell for a geophysical group. Yes, I remember that. And also their meter was also uh, installed on a Thompson once mm -hmm. as well. And uh, their, um, their version was um, some generations before. So it was good enough, but it is a, in their own term, these are very different meters. Okay. Yeah, so in their term, these are improved. I've never actually put in my hands on and compare the data from the you know same transit or anything like that. So I can't say it with factual information. But... So yes, yes, Ethan. Um, one more. No, no, please, no, please, see. more as much as possible. So, as many as possible. Uh, is there any synergy as you're putting this paper together? Mm -hmm developing the software package <laughs> that we're going to maybe all use. Mm. Uh, would there be any interest in trying to make the data reduction more available to operators? Um, 
So the PFP is also operation operator facility. So we put the clear boundary that we assess the data quality, but we do not reduce the data. That is scientists slash users um, task is our understanding. Mm -hmm. And that will continue. Yes. Okay. Yes, that will continue. Uh, yet, I would like to talk more about how we could, for example, um, help facilitating this within RTR, mm -hmm. because that's probably more important than us doing, but on the archive side of the airport. Mm -hmm. I think it could be interesting to have the data distributions include the raw data, mm -hmm. but maybe take a crack at mm -hmm. draft, drafts incorporating the other data you need, like center beam and all that, mm -hmm. to do some sort of first pass reduction and include that as some sort of data set in a data distribution. So the data distribution you mean by the data from the ship to OTR? Mm -hmm. But you could say that that's not feasible because it's a post-processing thing. And... But the um, I will then share with you the, I think I, I owe you a data format and then whatnot, right? Because. Well, yeah, I asked, I mean, 10 years ago, you put together a MATLAB thing mm. and I never did anything with it, but. Ah, okay. <laughs> you know that there are some tools like that out there. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. So well, to, um, yeah. Okay. Um, so R to R, I wrote code that cross does the process, not for the DGMs yet, but all the VGM trees. And this, I have to write this code as well. So we generate a what I call an evaluation quality product because it's done programmatically. I don't have time to do it science wise, but there's no reason at some point in the future. That I couldn't share that code with anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, if your question is basically whether or not we have the shareable code for the data reduction for your users, we do. Okay. Yeah. So, we are happy to um, share what we have uh, right now, set the format coming from most of the vessels that we install the DGS. And, you know, it's just one line of the data ingestion and then the rest is the and we air. So yeah, uh we have shared that with is that Kilowana? No, not Kilowana. I think Revel or Ride that had an obvious pickup cruise where Dawn and Blackman came on. If you yeah, remember? I remember this. Yeah, so I did that one. Yeah. So the donor uh, asked if we have any code because the format is totally different from what's coming out from BGM3. So they did not know what they are looking at. So we just provide it and she tweaked it for her own purpose. And then, yeah, using that. And we did the same for uh, um, Go for Cruise on Atlantis, I believe, too. So what's this last one? Sorry. Oh, that was just the initially when we first installed the DGS, you're talking about sending every day, the end of the day, all the data. And so I think we're, we've changed that now. Yeah. And I think we, you, you and I discussed it, but we were talking about sending snippets of like part of a transit so that you guys mm. can still see the data. Um, and if that's still right, so for the sake of meter monitor monitoring these meters, it is okay to, for example, um, wait, you know, data to go to R to R, but because, like I said earlier, the meters behavior has still unknown components for the duration of more than a few weeks or months. We prefer to get the snippets of data, particularly during the transit, if you have. And then as soon as you can send us data, I can just take a look and then, okay, the meter is behaving okay, or uh, 
it's kind of weird happening. So you kind of turn off and then turn back on, etc. Yes. Would that still be at the end of each day? Is that more expensive? No, 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 no. It's, so if you have the um, cruise and then if you you know leave the port to do the transit to the site. And then that data would be great or return. Can, can we set up a daily cron job that just sends you the data? Daily is too data? much. I don't think I can take a look at If I have you know two or three more months of those, I can do it. Well, that's a good yes. <laughs> So I know we're all excited. I think this is going on forever. If you guys want to continue in the hallway, that's awesome. But uh, we're out of time. Yeah, yeah. pretty, pretty <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> I saw the email was so. Oh, it's popular. Yeah, that was like awesome. the most Thanks. reply. Yeah, thank you Thanks. so much.